December day. Wait, Silas. My girl Benny sent me her picture yesterday. Oh, let me tell you about it. Rita Hayworth ain't got nothing on her. Rita Hayworth? Wait a second. I thought you said Benny was a blonde. No, no, no. It's Mary Lou. I'll tell you what, fire boy. I'll put him on a chart.
means you take a good long look. Hope none of you ever see a day like this again. Now, nobody will ever know what it was like. But maybe the ones that lived through it. You just be damn sure you don't forget the ones who didn't. December 7th, 1941, 10 in the morning. The United States suffers one of history's most devastating surprise attacks. With 2,403 dead and her once invincible Navy decimated, America is forced to join the conflict already raging in Europe and Asia. Prior to Pearl Harbor, the Japanese war machine had swept across China, cutting off American aid, and then pressed on into Burma with limited resistance. At home, Japan was building up a seemingly superior naval fleet, led by some of the world's largest aircraft carriers. But Admiral Yamamoto's prediction had come true. The aftermath of the Day of Infamy had indeed awakened the sleeping giant that was America. As the Emperor's armies march toward the Philippines, the United States takes action. December 7th. Dear Joe, you'll never know how happy and relieved we were to hear from you. Mom and I were clearing the lunch dishes when news of the Pearl Harbor attack came on the radio. Mom went all white and dropped a big platter on the floor. Dad finally calmed her down, but I don't think she slept at all, waiting for word that you were all right. There were more photographs in the paper this morning. It must have been horrible to be there, Joe. Thank heaven Donnie wasn't stationed in Hawaii, too. I don't think Mom would have survived the worry. Like everyone else, we listened to the President's speech the next day. Dad was real quiet afterwards. I think he always believed there'd never be another great war like the one he'd lived through. That evening, I saw an amazing sight. I passed by the Army Recruitment Office, and there were hundreds of men lined up outside. A few boys from my school were there, and eight men on Dad's shift clocked out and signed right up, the coal dust still on their faces. We hear now that war's been declared, and once you've shipped out, you won't be able to tell us where you are. Write back when you can, and stay safe. Love from your sister, Mary. P.S. Mom wants to keep all the Christmas decorations up until you and Donnie get home, so get this war over with fast. We got overrun by the enemy and lost the truck and all our demolition gear. The truck is somewhere near that church in the town square. The place is crawling with jacks. Here they come! The demolition's on the truck to blow this bridge.
them! on the ground. The Japs have been using pole mines and there's no way we can make it through these streets without a dismounted man. Now this tank is on its last legs, so you stay close, keep us clear on the flanks and to the rear.
chewing us up. Now they've got a spotter and an observation post somewhere. I'll be up high in one of those buildings. They'll have a radio relay station nearby. Find a boat and knock them out. We'll hold here. Got a lot riding on you, Moraine. Don't let us down. Amigo, the...
of this truck and shoot anything that moves. It's gonna be a bumpy ride.
At ease, lad. Listen, son, I'm sorry about your brother. We, uh... We got a damn tough job done, and most of us made it out alive. He was... Well, he was a good Marine. You can't ask for more than that. With American armed forces now fully engaged in war, Japanese-occupied South Pacific Islands are feeling the pressure. But hopes are crushed for a swift Allied victory in the Philippines. After a long, bloody battle, General MacArthur is ordered to retreat. Thousands of troops are left behind and forced to surrender. The enemy now controls the Philippines. MacArthur vows to return. In a bold offensive move, the United States prepares to land 10,000 troops on Guadalcanal, a relatively unknown island, where a strategic airfield is under construction by Japanese forces. Dear Joe, I have no idea if you've been told yet, but I have terrible news. Yesterday we got a telegram, the kind everyone dreads. Mom refused to open it until Dad rushed home from work. It was about Donnie. He's missing in action in the Philippines. We tried to get more information from the War Department, but all we know is Donnie and some of the other men in his unit are unaccounted for. Mom's taking this very hard. She's holding on to the hope that Donnie's just been separated from the other Marines, that he made it out of the battle but hasn't been able to report back yet. Maybe it's just some awful mistake. Dad says that can happen sometimes, right? For now, all we can do is pray for another telegram with better news. Somehow, I know it will come. I decided I had to do something to take my mind off things, to help the war effort. With all the men gone overseas, a lot of the girls are working in the factories now. I applied for a job down at the Atlas Steel Plant, and I start on Monday. Where are you, Joe? Your last letter had so many holes cut out by the sensors that it looked like a sieve. But please, write again. It means so much to us to hear from you, especially now. Love, Mary. Listen up, Marines. The mission is to soften up the enemy before the main assault at dawn. We land across the beach, proceed to the airfield, destroy an ammo dump, eliminate any remaining resistance, sit tight till our relief arrives. Any questions? How deep do you think this water is? What's the matter? Can't you swim? Well, shut up, Davis. You shut up. Hand a chatter back there. Cover those banks! Get some fire out there!
Marines. There's Japs out there, I can't see them. I can barely see the front of the raft. Squad's already on the beach. Move out, Marine. Let's go. Griffin, this way. Follow me. Something right here.
vehicle. We'll do a hasty ambush here. Catch on that! This one's back for zero! Die, you SOB! <laughs>
皆殺しだこの決断を失うしかないんだ
前もここまでだ。打て打て打て。
shotgun, Marine! Take out that stuff! Well done, Griffin. Now we got this airfield secured, we can get a foothold on this island and start pushing the Japanese back. We're through retreating, lad. America's back in this war. When John Adams formed the Marines in 1775, an entirely new method of warfare was born. Unlike armies that marched cross country to battle, the Marines were amphibious, launching their attacks with shore landings. In the decade before World War II, the Marines began to truly develop their style of combat. This preparation paid huge dividends in the early days following America's entry into the war. Guadalcanal was taken and secured with almost no loss. However, swift Japanese counterattacks led to a tough and costly campaign to hold the island. Despite the brutal climate and high number of enemy troops, the Marines, aided by U.S. soldiers and local inhabitants, were finally victorious. Later in the war, the Marines and their unique battle tactics would prove invaluable. Dear Joe, last week out of the blue we got a phone call from a Marine Corporal in Buffalo who'd been wounded and sent home. His name is Ray Parrish, and he's been trying to track us down for weeks. Corporal Parrish was with Donnie's unit when the Japanese invaded the Philippines. He heard that Donnie and several other Marines were captured and sent to a prison camp. Dad finally talked to a man at the War Department today. The government can't verify Ray's story. They can only continue to list Donnie as missing. But Joe, what if it's true? At least he's alive. That's what we must believe now. Ray is visiting family in Erie soon, and he's promised to drive down to Pittsburgh. He has snapshots of Donnie from when they were stationed together on Wake Island. I can't wait to meet him. I'll mail you a package tomorrow with socks, razor blades, and magazines. I hope it reaches you soon. With love, Mary.
imagine any of us got much sleep, so I'll spare the small talk. This is the situation. We managed to take the airfield, but we haven't pushed the Japanese off the island yet. Still delaying our repair crews with artillery from the west, and they hit us hard last night, as you can tell. Headquarters is calling that artillery position Pistol Pete. We can't use this airfield with Artie firing at us all day and all night. I want that damn Pistol Pete taken out. Raider patrols say there's a Scott and some Coast Watchers in the area. have been on the island since the start of the war. Keep an eye out for them. They could be of some help. Brooks and Thomason are your squad. Take care of them, Corporal. Shut down that artillery no matter what it takes.
You're a lucky chat we ran into you, Marine. I'm Martin Clements and this is Salas and Keep. We've just come across a squad of your mates and they're in a very tight spot. Follow me. In here! Follow me. Take a look. Take your squad down the path to the left and set up overlooking the plantation house. Silas Keep and I will flank them to the right. Hold your fire until we're in position. Pistol Pete and were ambushed en route. I still need to get to that gun, and I need your help to get there. Silencing that artillery is more important than you know. We spotted a convoy of Japanese transport ships racing for the coast this morning. Now, if you lads can't get the airfield up and running soon, well, we may not be able to hold the island.
Men are safe and the caves are just up the hill. Lieutenant Colonel McKelvey sent these to help you clear the caves. Let's go.
Japs have their gun entrenched in the cave system winding through the ridge line. There's a fissure in the rock leading into the caves that may be unguarded. Follow me. All right, lads, the moment of truth. We'll meet you across the bridge to the north. Good luck. Be my guest. Come on, Griffin, set it up! We gotta move!
All right, let's move on then. Here he is, sir. This kid's got potential. Really hate to lose him, but I think he's exactly what you're looking for. Seven months after joining the war, America's need for intelligence gathering and distribution was growing critical. Traditionally, these tasks had belonged to the Department of State. President Roosevelt sought advice from a trusted friend, William J. Donovan, a Medal of Honor recipient and veteran of the Great War. Donovan proposed a new, autonomous, and covert organization to carry out intelligence missions behind enemy lines. The Office of Strategic Services was created in June 1942 under Donovan's control. This elite force would swiftly become a critical weapon against the Axis. With units sent to every front, agents of the OSS were instrumental in many Allied victories. Hi, Joe. You're probably wondering about the stationery. Even though I did swell on the assembly line, the foreman offered me a job as secretary to the accounts office. It's more money, so I can't complain. But you should see your little sister's spot weld steel plate. I have to tell you a funny story. Last night, we went to the Grand Theater to see a movie. Wish you'd been with us. Before the feature, there was a newsreel showing some Marines on Guadalcanal. Suddenly, Dad jumps from his seat and yells, That's my son! That's Joe! He ran back to the projection booth and made them show it again. It was quick, but one of those boys sure looked like Joe Griffin. I even saved you a souvenir. Well, coffee break is over, but I'll send a longer letter soon. Oh, we got your postcard. Even though it took weeks to cross the Pacific, it really brightened the day. Love, Mary. Take a seat, Sergeant Griffin. Now that you've completed your OSS training, we need you in active service. Immediately. In fact, tonight. One of our operatives has uncovered evidence of a top secret Axis summit planned for tonight, somewhere in Singapore. We need to know what those bastards are up to. One of our Nisei operatives will make contact, a private first class to knock on. He'll brief you upon arrival. Additionally, the Limeys have an SOE operative underground there, Major Bromley. He's kind of a wild card, so keep your eyes peeled. That's the mission. And remember, we're depending on you.
Tanaka, private first class. Yeah, I'll be your guide and translator for our little midnight tour here. But we'd better get moving. The Colonel will have my hide if we're late. Okay, here's the intel I have on the summit. The Axis have taken over the best hotel in the city. Our Commander Shima is in charge of the whole thing. Nobody knows who he is or what his plan is, but security will be very tight. Rumor has it that a whole company of secret police work for him. Keep it, Mom. I'll do the talking. Who are you? Who are you? city upside down looking for us now. I'll go throw them off the trail. Lose them in the alleys and I'll meet you at the hotel.
Show, lad. I thought I was done for.
Bromley, SOE, at your service. I arrived in 32, went underground when the bleeding Japs took over. Now, you were heading for that tea party at the hotel, right? Follow me, have you there in no time. Tracking a certain German colonel in the hope of, uh, how shall I put it, relieving him of his uniform. He should be passing through this very plaza. Here, lad, take these caltrops. Mind the sharp points. When I get the word, toss them under the tires of the staff car. Now, stuff them up right nicely.
shoot. They kept asking me about this Bromley character, but I didn't know. So they locked me in the bleeding cupboard. Been here for days. Here, take this out. It's, it's me, Tamani. Oh boy. Swell uniform. Uh, a little loose in the waist, but it'll do. Come on, Colonel Candler. We don't want you to be late. Your vehicle, sir. Better start thinking in German. You're on, pal. Welcome to Singapore, Colonel Kappa. Now, if you would be so kind as to follow me. Enjoy your stay. have impressed you, honored guests. As we Japanese form the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere, we have discovered much wealth in the other nations of the region. This gold will secure the future of Japan, but what of the present? The gold cannot buy more weapons or more ships, but what might it purchase? May I introduce you to General Borov? For a handsome reward, the General has assured me that soon there will be a new leader in Russia. One who can guarantee peace with Germany. Now, the German head of state would never accept this plan. But there are elements within his own high command who would strike him down and replace him with a man whose vision of the future is unclouded. Their representative has joined us. The imposter! What? What is this? That's my uniform! <laughs> Didn't think I'd leave you with a sneaky whip.
this information needs to get back to the OSS. Our only chance is to find out where the gold is and stop it from being moved. I think I still have a few friends in Burma. Along with successfully occupying much of the Pacific, the Japanese Golden Lily team began a systematic pillaging of Asian wealth. The team looted thousands of metric tons of gold and valuables from Chinese cities. The largest load was collected by General Yamashita after his conquest of Singapore, the repository of many hidden British and French assets. The one obstacle the Japanese faced was getting their hoard back to the homeland. At first, the enemy relied on naval transport. However, after Allied forces picked up on this tactic and began hitting the Emperor's Navy hard, the Japanese began securing their treasure in underground mines. Dear Joe, last month we had a big storm and the elm in the backyard came down. Sorry to say, your old treehouse was smashed. Donnie's going to be awfully upset when he gets home. Mom found his magazines in the wreckage and put them in the trash. So that's where he was hiding them. After the stump was cleared, Mom planted a victory garden. Between tending her crops and volunteering at the Red Cross, she's keeping busy. I'm sure you've heard about all the shortages here. I had to save up a month's worth of sugar ration stamps to make Dad's birthday cake, and the tires on the car are bald as a cue ball. But we don't mind these little sacrifices because we know it helps all of you fighting for us overseas. We think of you and Donnie constantly and pray for your safe return. Right back when you can, big brother. Much love, Mary. from up there, Raj. Over. Good, good. Very good. Well, there's a lot of temples in the valley, Major Bromley. I can't say for certain, but there appears to be some activity near the large temple to the north of your current position. Over. Understood, mate. That should be good enough for now. Get yourself out of range. Over. Roger. Just two more passes. I want another look at the temple before we move in. Over. Damn it! We have to move now. They'll be swarming the crash site in a matter of minutes. Me and my lads are going to take out those anti-aircraft guns around the temple so we can do a proper airstrike. Be out of there by the time the fourth gun explodes. Is that clear? Oh! <laughs> 
Don't shoot! It's me, Tanaka! Major, he must have been taken into that temple we saw to the north. That must be their headquarters. Come on!
てると思ったろう They're stripping all the gold out of this temple. Commander Shima must be involved with this somehow. We need to keep as quiet as possible. Hopefully we can find the pilot without letting anyone know we're here. I think the detention... 
operations center is just down that staircase.
somewhere. We gotta find it and stop it. Burma was an important Southeast Asian land supply route for the Americans as well as the Japanese. Control of Burma meant control over a key artery for supplies traveling in both directions. Enemy forces used this route to send looted wealth south to its aircraft carriers. The United States depended on Burmese roads to lend support to the Chinese in their fight against Japanese occupation. The most successful form of transport in Burma was the railway system. The air routes were inefficient and the sea belonged to the Allies. With the forced labor of slaves and prisoners, the Japanese laid track at breakneck speed, at a tragic cost of many lives. As the battles were fought in thick jungle, control of Burma changed hands several times. But finally, the Allies seized control. Dear Joe, Saturday afternoon there was a big war bond rally downtown with a parade, a band, and a radio broadcast. I went with Ray Parrish, Donnie's friend from the service. You would like him, Joe. We've been seeing each other for a few months now. Anyway, who's there selling bonds but your favorite pinup, Madeline May? She was signing photos and there was a big mob around her. But Ray shouldered his way through and got right up to the stage. He told Miss May about the Marines swooning for her and she laughed and gave him a picture for you. So keep it in a safe place where none of your buddies can get their paws on it. Love from someone who is not a movie star, Mary.
Over here. You the yank we're expecting, eh? We saw your mates land up ahead. Come with us, we'll take it here. Enemy troops ahead. Dug in tighter and the rubber.
わるいがお前どうだ助けてくれ敵だ<笑>ここまで死んでいただくこの城だ。Over here. You're the yank we're expecting, eh? We saw your mates land up ahead. Enemy troops ahead. Looking tighter than a rug of scrum.
くりと死んでもらうんかい通さないぞ。カルタだったな。調べて。死ね。
You took your bloody time. Come on, we've got to get to that bridge. Lead the way.
great shame. But I managed to get a bit of information. These were Shima's men, and this was his train. The whole bloody thing is filled with gold for that plan of his. He's headed for a ship he's on. We need to get there. But first, let's get off this bridge. Have you seen Tanaka? I lost him somewhere back there. I hope he's okay. We're getting the light there, man. Despite heavy losses in battleships during the attack on Pearl Harbor, the United States fleet was able to maintain their naval strength. This feat was accomplished by the strategic use of aircraft carriers, as the United States quickly determined that air power was the future of naval superiority. The Japanese realized this as well, and began amassing one of the largest fleet of carriers the world had ever seen. The two seagoing forces met at Midway in early June of 1942. After three days of intense fighting, the Japanese had lost many of their large carriers and were forced to retreat. The victory at Midway marked a turning point in naval warfare. No longer were the number of battleships the most important factor. The nation with the greatest carrier fleet was king. Dear Joe, Dad surprised us with a trip to Atlantic City on the 4th of July. There were so many servicemen on the train that most of us civilians had to stand for the entire ride, but I didn't care a bit. We had a wonderful time on the boardwalk and even saw the famous diving horse. We were passing a shooting gallery and Dad dared Mom to try it. She knocked him down like Annie Oakley and won a Cupid doll. He should have seen Dad's face. Maybe you Marines could use another sharpshooter. Wish you were here, Mary. We're headed for the Japanese carrier, Toshikaze. Intelligence is betting that Yamashita's gold is on board. The only way we'll know for sure is to see for ourselves. While we're at it, we should send that bleeding tub to the bottom of the drink. And I've got some ideas on how to get that particular job done. Imoto Shou no Koku Kinsu. Kochira Toshikaze. Imoto o akirakai shite kudasai. Dozo. Kochira wa Kawashima Hiyaku desu. Gokuhin nimmu de goitemasu. Moshiyakeru koto ga dekimasen. Chakkan kyoka negaimasu. Dozo. Ryukai. They bought it. We're going in. With this naval uniform, I'll be able to move around the ship freely. Once we land, you guys lay low. I'll tell the crew to tow the plane to the hangar. When you're safely below, you should be able to move around and find that gold. In the meantime, I'll infiltrate the officers' quarters and try to find Shin. Oi, I'm not sure if you're a bit older. Yes, that's right. 最近若い証拠が増えてるからな。Right, here's the plan. There should be a huge ventilation system below decks to prevent the buildup of lethal gases. We are gonna find those systems and break them so the fans are always on. Next, we locate the fuel tanks 
Damage the valve so that they're spraying vapour and the fans will spread it all through the ship. Finally, we set a demolition charge at the centre and sayonara. Let's go, Griffin, and try not to attract too much attention.
Right, here's the plan. There should be a huge ventilation system below decks to prevent the build-up of lethal gases. We are gonna find those systems and break them. Duo, duo, duo. <laughs>
caused me a great deal of pain. But this is nothing compared to the torture you are about to encounter. Your meddlesome irritations have cost me a fortune in gold. You may have won the battle, but I assure you, one day the war will come back to haunt you, and Japan will rise again. There is something very familiar about you, Yankee scum. Is it possible that you have a brother? Nothing to say? Then I shall pay a visit to my other American prisoner and see if his tongue is as resistant as yours. Only I will not be as gracious a host as you have seen here today.
Kyle's own. and stolen gold swallowed by the sea and a good man gone with it. Fare thee well, Private Tanaka. You were one of the good ones, lad. Well, Griffin, we need to find out where Shima's taken your brother. It's up to you and me, mate. We got a bit of a debt to repay.
1944, two years after General MacArthur had been ordered to leave 70,000 of his troops stranded, the United States would return to the Philippines. The road back to save MacArthur's men was not easy. Admiral Nimitz's overall attack plan involved a direct route to Japan, which bypassed the Philippines altogether. MacArthur appealed to the Joint Chiefs and eventually gained their support. In October 1944, MacArthur landed on the island of Leyte, declaring, people of the Philippines, I have returned. MacArthur proceeded to regain control of the Philippines. However, less than a third of the troops he had left behind were rescued. Dear Joe, yesterday Ray Parrish came by to visit. He brought one of those little records that you make in the booth to mail home. One night at the base on Wake Island, after a couple of beers, Ray and Donnie had made a recording as a joke. Ray had forgotten about it and just found it among his things. He played it for us. They sang Home on the Range, and Donnie was off-key as usual. Then there was a message at the end, where Donnie says how much he misses all of us. As you can imagine, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Joe, I know you don't believe in such things, but hearing Donnie's voice was like a sign to me. It just made me believe even more that he's out there somewhere and that he's all right. Love from all of us, Mary. <laughs> 